have to recalibrate every now and then. So thank you for that investment of time. Somebody say amen. amen. If you would, amen. I want to uh, send greetings to my family, amen, to uh, amen to my nephew, uh, amen, Dwayne. We honor you, uh, great man of God, and to my brother Clifford, uh, amen, praying for you. He had surgery this week. Uh, amen. We're grateful that God uh, brought you through, big brother. And so continue, as I told you, to believe that God, uh, the God that we celebrated before the surgery is a God that we're going to celebrate after the surgery. So, amen. Continue to heal and get strong in the Lord. Somebody give God a hand, praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. If you would, amen, we're going to uh, move into our worship experience a little further. If you would join me, uh, amen, in the Old Testament book of First Kings. The Old Testament book of First Kings and the 17th chapter, and I'm going to read verses 11 through 16. First Kings in the Old Testament, chapter 17, I'm going to read verses 11 through 16. 16. We're going to ask all of you who can and will, wherever you are, if you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's word. First Kings in the 17th chapter, starting at verse number 11. When you have it, let me hear you say amen. If you need more time, say Bible study. Amen. First Kings in the 17th chapter, starting at verse number 11. And the writer records these words. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, everybody say, and she said. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son. But thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Amen. Uh, let me back up. And Elijah said, Thank you, Jesus. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Everybody shout first things first. And bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the, the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of this anointed word of Matt today. Have the courage to preach it. Let the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you all will pray with me and pray for me today, if it would honor God. I want to uh, preach and share from the theme, the thought, the topic, there's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. There's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. Turn to somebody, look at them and say, beloved, come on, tell them like you believe, say, beloved, there's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. Look at that somebody across the hall. Look at look across the sanctuary. Point at them and say, Beloved. Come on, point at them and say, Beloved. Be encouraged. There's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. Somebody bless God like you believe it today. 
There's a blessing. There's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. My brothers and sisters, all of us who are here today, all of those who are under the sound of my voice, Brother Ricky, at one time or another have experienced hardship. There's no one here uh, today, there's no one who is viewing this or who Mother uh, Audrey will view it, who does not have a testimony that God has brought them in and through something in their life. I want to encourage somebody today, and I want to encourage you like I've been encouraged. How many of us, amen, could look at ourselves and admit in truth that I have some shortcomings? Am I talking to anybody today? We, God wants to encourage somebody who if they stop long enough and if they just be real with God, and how many of us know that God knows who you are anyway? Am I talking to anybody? God already knows who you are, so why not be real with God? But God wants to encourage us in our shortcomings today. The question I want to ask today is what do you do when you don't have enough? What happens, uh, Brother Dalton, when you are faced with the reality that I want to, but I don't have enough? I tend to, but I don't have enough. Anybody ever been in that situation, Deacon Legrand, where, amen, it is your heart's desire to please God, amen. And, and, and Paul said it this way. He said the things that I should not do. Am I talking to anybody? Those are the things that I find myself doing. My brothers and sisters, you're not the only one trying to figure out this complex issue. Every now and then, God will put our faith to the test. The question is, when he puts us to the test, will we be consistent in every situation? Even at our low point, I must remind us that God is able to do the impossible. The question is, what happens when you're faced with a situation where it appears that God has, digging thought, left you short of what you need? Because how many of us know that every good and perfect thing comes from God? And it's easy for me, watch this, it's easy for me, it's easy for us, amen, to want to look to God and say, well, God, if you wanted me to do this, you are the supplier of everything. If you wanted it to turn out this way, you are the one that gives me everything that I need. And so it's easy for me to point back to God and talk about what God didn't do. But how many of us here today know that this is a walk by faith and not by sight? And so many times we find ourselves, Marvell, in situations where we're looking for things that we can touch or looking for things that we can grab or things that are tangible, amen, to be the answer or the solution. Sometimes, Tammy, we're looking for people, we're looking to people, amen, to be the answer or the solution to what we're going through. But today I want to challenge our faith, and I want to talk to some faith folks, folks who know, amen, that you you have to make a choice or you have to make a step. And how many of us know that if you make one step, God will make two? I want to talk to somebody today where, and I was watching that, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of Indiana Jones. I, mean, I love watching TV when I get a chance to watch TV anyway, but I love the series of Indiana Jones movie. And I love in the movie, The Last Crusade, amen, where he goes through the series of challenges and then he's at that point, uh, Deacon Legrand, where it appears that he's got to take the step of faith. He's got to take that, anybody seen the movie where he's got to take the leap of faith and he's standing there and he's got his hand, Regina, on his chest and his, I have to imagine in my sanctified mind that his heart was beating out out of control because he's looking down and everything in him tells him, Dominique, that I'm getting ready to fall to my death. But how many of us know that when it comes to God, amen, he said, if you lose your life for my, am I, am I talking to anybody? I want to talk to some folks where your faith was challenged. You know what you see, care, what your 
eyes, you know what you heard with your ears, but God is saying you stay faithful in spite of what you believe. So it's in our text today. Watch this. In our text, very simply, we find that when the widow of Zarephath fed Elijah, she thought she was preparing for her last meal. But we find in our text as it unfolds that a simple act of faith produced a miracle. She ultimately trusted the voice of God through Elijah and gave him all that she had. Faith, my brothers and sisters, is the step between promise and assurance. A miracle seemed out of reach. but Every miracle, large or small, starts with a simple act of obedience. You can't have faith without obedience. And you can't have obedience without faith. We may not see the solution of God till we take that first step of faith. We have to realize that God is not always going to show his hand. Is there anyone who knows that if you take one step that God will take the rest? So I know that I said that if we take one, he'll take two. But in reality, Regina, what happens is if we take one step, God will take the rest. Turn to somebody to tell him he'll do the rest. Yeah, the reality is that that one little show of faith, that one little step of faith or that one little step of obedience really digging the grand in the scheme of things isn't enough to get me over, get me through, help me beyond to be strong enough to deal with it. But in reality, God is so great and he's so wonderful and he, he, he is so unbelievable. His love and his power is so vast that he makes up the difference. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus makes the difference. I want to draw your attention to four things, and I'm going to be relatively quick today, but four, four things, Mother, I want to just draw your attention to, amen, to assure somebody that there's a blessing at the bottom of the barrel. I want to talk to somebody who, amen, the enemy tried to make you think that you're at rock bottom. This Zarephat woman, watch this, this woman of Zarephat, God talked to the man of God early in the morning. He said, he said I want you to get up early, and I want you to go Zarephath, and there's going to be a lady who I've instructed by faith who's going to bless you. And how many of us know that right in the midst of a trial or tribulation, God will give you an assignment that won't make sense right now? How many of us know that here you are struggling financially, struggling in your health, struggling with a relationship, struggling with something on your job, struggling with something, and God says, I've got an assignment for you, and what you want to do is you want to tell God about what you're struggling with, and God says, I know about that, but I'm not concerned about that. What I'm concerned about is you stepping out in obedience and faith to do what I called you to do. Turn to somebody and say, it's not about me. Come on, tell them it's not about me. Yeah, we must realize that it's not about us. God is not concerned about what we're going through, what you're going through, because he's got a supernatural promise in store for you. And how many of us know that if God can use you in a storm, he can bless somebody else? The reality is God wants to bless somebody else. Watch that. He wants to bless somebody else by being able to use you. The question is today, can God use you? Is there anybody that can tell God emphatically, I'm available, I'm willing, God, no matter what it takes, no matter what I have to go through, I'm willing to go through. Here is this Zarephath woman. Watch this. There's a famine in the land. There's a famine in the land. And everyone, she's not the only one going through, Brother Dalton, but how many of us know that what God has for you? Somebody should have caught that. Let me try that again. Is there any, any saints of God in the house that knows that what God has for you, 
that it is for you. You got to be excited. Somebody, somebody ought to be excited that God chose you. Everybody, Tammy, is not chosen. Everybody don't get this opportunity, but we got to learn how to bless God and say, God, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for enlisting me. Thank you for allowing me. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Is there anybody that can bless God in spite of the pain? And I'm not saying that pain is not pain, and I'm not saying hurt is not hurt, but is there anybody that can say Celebrate God's truth. He said, if you suffer with me, you shall. So here is this fat woman. Here's this woman in the midst of a famine who is going about her business. She has resolved in her mind. She's resolved in her mind that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare this last meal and me and my son are going to die. There's nothing after this. There's no more that I can do. There's no more that I have. And how many of us with our back against the wall have resolved that there's nothing else that we can do? How many of us with our back against the wall have resolved that there's nothing else that can help, that can happen? Watch this. And so the Bible says, watch this, stay with me. The Bible said that this Zarephath woman, now Elijah has come to her. And he has told her, what I want you to do is do what you planned on doing. But before you do that, I want you to make for me just a little cake. And then after you make the little cake for me, then you do what you want to do. How many of us, God has had to tell you, you put your assignment, you put your plans on hold? Let me talk to somebody again. I said, how many of you, God has told you, you put your plans on hold. I want you to do what I want you to do first. I know what you had on your mind to do. I know what you plan to have happen. I know what you want to do. But what I want you to do is put what you want to do on hold, and I need you to do what I need you to do. And so the man of God said, listen, prepare for yourself after you prepare for, prepare for me. And I, and I heard this morning in, in, in Sunday school, and I love that scripture in Matthew. It's not on my page, but it's certainly relevant. Matthew 6, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We want care. We want the, all these things, but we don't want to put God first. Am I talking to anybody? We want the, all these things, but we don't want to put God first. And, and listen, it's easy, watch this, it's easy, my brothers and sisters, to put God first when it don't cost you nothing. It's easy to put God first when you don't really have to put any skin in the game, when you don't really have to suffer anything, when you don't really have to go through anything, then we're willing to give God every, listen, God, you are my everything, you're wonderful, I love you, but when it costs me something, somebody talk to me. And so he said, make for me first, then for yourself. He said, but I want you to know that if you're obedient to what I tell you to do, he said that the oil in the cruise, it'll never go, go, go out. He said in the meal that you have, you thought it was just a little, he said it'll keep multiplying and it'll never end. How many of us know that when you put God first, he'll put you, he'll, he'll move you to the exceeding and abundant. Turn to somebody and say, he's more than enough. And so, and so I want to encourage somebody or maybe remind somebody, maybe, maybe God has blessed you in a supernatural way, amen, shown himself in a supernatural way, but maybe today is just a day that you need just some reminding, you need a refresher, it's not like you haven't been blessed by God, it's not like God hasn't provided, it's not like he hasn't made a way, but sometimes we can get stuck again, everybody say again. We get stuck again, and so God has to get us unstuck, and he has to remind us, I'm the same God that did it before, and I want to do it for you again today. And so maybe that's you today, but I want to give you this word of encouragement if you'll embrace four things. Let's go, Matt. Number one, the call can come at a time of your conflict. The call. Everybody say the call. The call. Come on, shout the call. The call can come, God's need of you, God's request, God's assignment for you. It can come at a time of conflict. Here was a Zarephath woman. What was the conflict? The conflict, there was a famine in the land. 
The conflict was she didn't have enough. But those were, those were, those were earthly conflicts. Those were her conflicts. They didn't mean nothing to God. And so, so watch this. The Bible said that she was in a conflict. She was conflicted. What was her conflict, Regina? Do I do what the man of God asked me to do? Or do I do what God asked me to do through the man of God? Or do I do what I planned on doing? Anybody ever been there? Ever, anybody ever been faced with that dilemma? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm in, I'm in a conflict. I'm in, I'm challenged. Anybody ever wrestled with your will? Anybody ever wrestled in, inside of yourself? I know the right thing to do, but right now my anger and my hurt and my brokenness, my situation, my circumstance, I'm struggling with that. And so I, here's what I really want to do. And, and we'll talk to God and we'll try and negotiate with God. God, you, you know what I really want to do. Amen. You, and you know that I, I have a right to do it. Well, you need to understand it doesn't matter whether you have a right or not. He had a right to send us to hand. But the Bible said that while I was yet a sinner, am I talking to anybody? So the call, everybody say the call. The call may come at your time of conflict. Look at Matthew in the 14th chapter, verse number 17, and consider these words. And they said unto him, we have but five loaves and two fishes. See, this is not the first time, Deacon LeGrand, somebody has ever encountered being short. Turn to somebody and tell them, I just didn't have enough. Come on, do your shows like this. I didn't have enough. Come on, everybody. I just didn't have enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so she wasn't the first one. Amen. She wasn't the first one, dear. I, I don't have enough. I don't have any more. I don't have more emotion to give. I don't, I don't have any more sacrifice to make. I don't, I don't have an, I don't, I don't know how much more do you want from me, God? How much more do you need for me to take? How long do I got to keep dealing with it? The question, the answer to the question is as long as he keeps dealing with you. Am I talking to anybody? So the Bible said the disciples, watch this. There was a multitude, and we know the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. The, the multitude came, and they were hungry. And the disciples, Deacon Dog, they were saved folks. And not just saved folks, they, these were the ones, Deacon LeGrand, these were the leaders of the church. If I do hand like this. These were the leaders of the church. Save folks. And they saw the hunger. And they told the ones who were hungry, they said, listen, we shut down for the night. <laughs> we shut down for the night. Y'all need to go figure this out yourself. And the Bible said that, that Jesus heard what they said. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Turn to somebody and say, with, with, with God, it's never too late. He said, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. He said, these folks are hungry. And how many of us, watch this, how many of us have had that interaction with God, had that discussion with God, and we want to tell God something that we think God don't know? I'm going to say that again. How many of us had that conversation with God? And you're trying to tell something that you think God don't know. And so they said, well, you know, I mean, it is late, but if you, if you tell, and then, he, and then, and sometimes we tell God stuff because we think we brilliant and we're going to catch God. We, we think John, okay, well, you God, but figure this one out. You know, we had that type of attitude. And so they said, well, listen, all we got is two fish and five loaves. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Now, you ain't, you ain't trying to be smart, but, but, you, but you're trying to figure out how smart God is. You said, well, all I got is two fish and five loaves. And then he said, and? <laughs> Anybody ever heard God tell you, and? You trying to tell you trying to tell him about your truth. He said, "I'm trying to show you a truth." And so they said, "All we got is two fish and five loaves." He said, "Bring me that." 
Somebody should have ran right there. How many of you, God, have said, just, just bring me what you got? You, you, have, you ever had to talk to somebody, a, a child or somebody in your life, a friend, somebody you're associated with, and, you, and you, you're watching their doubt, you, you're watching them go through, you, just, bring it, just, just bring it to me. You know, you, you're tired of trying to tell them. Will any, anybody ever been there? I, I know. I, can we just be real today? I know I've been there, and, and I try to give you every answer. I try to help you see it for yourself. I try to help you understand God ain't going to fail you, but you still struggle. So you know what? Just bring it to me. Let me just, let me just, let me just do it. Just bring, just bring it to me. He said, so I'll tell you what you do. Sit him down. Just sit him down. Sit him down. See, because sometimes, Regina, he had to tell me, just go sit down someplace. I right, turn to somebody and say, he got, he got this. Come on, look at somebody and say, he got this. He got this. And so Matthew, what he has to do, he had to say, just go sit down. Okay, just go sit down, and then, and then I'll, take, I'll take care of this. And isn't it good to know that he don't hold that against us? He don't hold that against me, that I couldn't figure it out, that I couldn't trust him, that I tried to be smart. I tried to be spiritually brilliant and see if I can figure God out. And so sometimes he had to say, you know what, just go sit down. So he said, sit him down, and then he went and prayed. And it's wonderful to watch Regina, God pray over my little stuff. It just blows my mind, Lady Audrey, when God prays over my little stuff. I think the stuff that I'm dealing with is monumental. But when, how many, James Cleaver said, little becomes much. Somebody should have screamed right there. I said James Cleveland was inspired to write a song that says little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. When you give it over to God, God will take that thing and he will multiply it. When you give that thing to God, God will make more than you ever can imagine. Watch this. Number two, let's go, man. Number two. Our obedience must be greater than our obstacle. Now, she clearly had a legitimate roadblock in her presence. I don't have enough. She had a legitimate argument. She had, and this has nothing to do with her not telling the truth. This has nothing to do with this not being legitimate. Are you, are you following with me? This had nothing to do with this. She was telling the truth as she knew it. And so she, she, but, but, but there comes a time, my brothers and sisters, where your obedience has to be greater than your obstacle. So no matter what's in front of me, Deacon LeGrand, no matter what's impeding my progress, there's got to be something. Can, can we consider the scripture? Again, thank you, Holy Spirit. In the book of 1 John, I believe it's 4, 4, the, the, the writer, John, writes these words. He said, greater is he that is in me. Anybody ever read that? You have to declare, you have to decree, you have to resolve that no matter what's in front of you, that there's something greater inside of me. And if I could just reach down and connect with that, that God will make it all right. I'm not talking to anybody. So if he don't net, watch this, watch this. And here's what we don't realize. What he does inside of me has nothing to do with him changing what's in front of me. Turn to somebody and say, it's about me. See, God wants to use what's in front of me. You think it's heeding your progress. The only reason why it's heeding your progress is because you're looking too much at it and taking your eyes off of God. Look, look, at, look at Job, the 13th chapter, verse number 15. Look at Job 13 and 15. Now, this is a man who lost his family. Lost his well and is on a sick bed. Anybody following that narrative? And look at what he says, Darius. He said, though he slay me, who's he? God. See, you have to fundamentally believe that everything that you go through is God. It's not the enemy. It's not the devil. It's God. The devil will try and capitalize on God working in your life and try and convince you that it's him. But everything that happens in your life goes across God's death for signature. I'll keep saying that. And if he, if he signed off on it, it's for your good. 
Am I talking to anybody? So look at what he said. He said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. But I will remain my own ways before him. What he was saying is, no matter what I go through, digging, thinking dark, he said, no matter what I go through, I'm going to be faithful to God. His wife tried to tell him, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, he said you lost your mind. His friends came to him and said, listen, man, it's just us. Ain't nobody around. Ain't nobody going to tell it what's really going on. Because ain't nobody going to go through all of this and they ain't did something. And isn't that just like folks, they want to judge you in your situation and don't have revelation from God at all? They want to look at what you're going through and they want to assume that what you're going through is equated to sin in your life. It don't have nothing to do with sin. Sometimes God is just bragging on you and he said, have you considered my servant? Tell somebody, tell them God just bragging on you. Number three, let's move. Number three. God will fulfill his promise when we are faithful. God will fulfill his promise when we are faithful. Let me remind you again of what Matthew, let's go. Matthew 6, says these words. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. First things first. And you say, well, okay, Bishop, I understand conceptually of what you're saying, how does that play out? Remember Jesus? Anybody remember a guy by the name of Jesus? The Bible said that there was a man named Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane who knew what his fate was. He knew what was coming next. He knew what his outcome was. And he talked to his father and he said, this bitter cup, he said, you can let it pass by. But how many of us remember that his default was nevertheless... Not my will. See, God wants to know, can you get to nevertheless? Can you get to that point to say, no matter how much it hurts, I want you to be glorified. No matter how much I go through, I want your will to be done in my life. How many of us can tell God, and I understand you had to cry yourself to sleep last night, but I want you to let you know or remind somebody that weeping endures for a night, but that joy comes in the morning. Somebody talk to me. See, God will, for, he will fulfill his promise. And here's what I want you to understand, Mother Johnson. Many times God fulfills his promise even when I'm not faithful. Turn to somebody and look at him and say, by the way, that's mercy. Come on, turn to somebody and say, by the way, that's mercy. Yeah, see, we want to talk, Keiko, we want to talk about God's grace, and we glorify amazing grace, and we just plump a circumstance around God's grace, and grace is real, but I want to talk to at least five people who understand what God's mercy is like, that you weren't faithful, but God blessed you anyhow. You didn't keep your word, but God blessed you anyhow. You didn't stay consistent, but God bought you. Is there anybody that can tell God, God, I don't deserve it, but I thank you for your mercy today. Grace is amazing, but it was mercy that saved my life. Is there anybody here today that will celebrate God with me and tell God mercy said no when I deserve to die? Mercy said no when I could have been homeless. Mercy said no when I could have lost my mind. Mercy said no. Give me somebody that will stand to your feet and celebrate Jesus huh? like this is the last time huh? and tell God your grace is amazing huh? but today I came to celebrate huh? your mercy huh? because your mercy brought me out of darkness huh? into the marvelous light huh? I might have came kicking and screaming huh? but I'm grateful that you knew what was best huh? for me huh? is there anybody today huh? that can tell God thank you huh? for doing what I couldn't do myself the Bible said that I was on my way to hell, but God reached down in the muck and the mire, and he picked me up. Is there anybody that can celebrate that God did a marvelous work in your life? Give God a hand praising him.
One more, take a seat. I'm almost done. One more, one more. Number four. Watch God stretch out when we step out on his promises. Watch God turn to somebody and say, watch out. Come on, tell them, watch out. Listen, God, I, I want somebody to know that God will never show up without showing out. I want to tell, so I want to remind you what it felt like the last time that when God shows up, you almost lost your mind. Amen. They almost threw away the key. You almost lost your life, but God spared you. Amen. And you ought to thank God and you ought to not tell somebody. You ought to tell everywhere you go, everybody you run into that God did something for me that I couldn't do for myself. I didn't deserve it. I didn't even know I needed it, but I'm grateful. How many of us know that he knows what you have need of before you ask? So today, if we could, just for a few minutes, and we're closing now, I want us to act like we really know this God that we're talking about. I want us to act like we really appreciate this Jesus that we're talking about. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to be about it. So I need about 12 people in this house that will be about your father's business. You say, well, Bishop, what business is that? Let us consider what the word of God said. The Bible said, Kiara, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So I need 12 people, and I don't care what he's done. I want you to stand and bless God like this is your last time. I don't care where he brought you from, but I need 12 people to open up your mouth, to clap your hands, and to bless God in this place, because God stretched out uh, on his promise uh, when I stood uh, on the promise of God. Uh, give God a praise. Uh, it was James who said, uh, he said, blessed uh, is the one uh, who preserves uh, under trial uh, because having stood uh, the test, uh, somebody shout, I stood the test. Uh, come on, tell them I stood the test. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that knows that you know uh, that when you stand on the word of God, that God will not fail you. The Bible said that the Shunammite woman, good God Almighty, that she stood on the word of God. The Bible said that she prayed on the way to the man of God. Say, God, there's an answer. If I can get in your presence just one more time, I think about me. Mary and her sister Martha who sent word to Jesus. Him whom thou lovest is sick. Is there any intercessors in the house today that can praise somebody out of their sickness? Is there anybody today that can praise somebody out of their storm? Is there anybody that can praise somebody out of their bondage? But I heard Jesus say this sickness is not under death give God a praise in this place the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 19 but my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory in other words there's a blessing at my bottom. There's a blessing at my low point. Is there anybody here that will bless God? That God knows how to bless you. That God knows when to bless you. And God knows where to bless you. Let me close. The Bible says that the psalmist wrote, he said, ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. How do I know? Because I recognize the shadow. The Bible said that he is the light of the world. And is there anybody here 
that knows that you know that you can't have a shadow without the light being present. In other words, when you're at your low point, the Lord is right there waiting to bless you. How do I know? Because it went on to write. He said, you prepare a table right in the presence of my enemy. Tell the devil, you should have killed me when you had a chance. But now, God has showed up. And I want you to know that by faith, he's about to show out in this place. Let me talk to somebody who's waiting on your breakthrough. Let me encourage somebody who's waiting on an answer that if you hold on just a little while longer that God can and God will make a way out of no way. Open your mouth and bless God in this place. If you're waiting on a miracle, bless him right now. If you're waiting on the healing, bless him right now. If you're waiting on the breakthrough, bless him right now. Let everything that had breath praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and clap and applaud the marvelous work of God. Open your mouth and Shabbat God. The Bible declares that you can speak those things as though they be. Is there anybody that can praise God in spite of it? I don't see it, but I bless you, God. I can't touch it, but I bless you, God. Give God a praise in this place. Bless God in this place. Bless God in this place. Watch this, watch this. The Bible said, watch this. The Bible said that this woman, she heard something. Let's go, Kenny. She heard something. And if you just listen, if you just listen for him, he's speaking to you. If you stop, so many times we're talking in our own head. And we're talking in our own head about our own truth. Yes, it happened. Go talk to God. Yes, you're going through it. But go talk to God. She was able to hear something, Deacon LeGrand. She didn't hear Elijah. He, she heard something through Elijah. And she was obedient to what she heard God say. And because she stepped out on faith and because she believed the report, sometimes you got to believe the other report. And I'm not saying that what you told, what you were told was a lie. I'm not, I'm not saying what you, what you were told was not truth in its context, but I'm here to tell somebody that there's a greater truth. See, when you hear the voice of God, I don't care what it looks like. When you hear the voice of God, I don't care what it is that's happening. You got to stand on the promise of God. The Bible declared that after she did, according to God's command, it says that she and her house that they ate for many days. And not only did they eat for many days, it says that the meal and the oil did not fail. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm telling you today, this is you. Now it's private. Now it's personal. So this is not group praise. Now this is you and God. Now this is you and your situation. And my only assignment is to point you to the word of God. And either you'll believe or you won't believe. Either you'll hear or you won't hear. But I want to tell you that God is no respecter of person. And if God worked a miracle for this woman, he'll work a miracle for you. Every head bow. Every head bow. Every eye closed. 
Somebody, you needed this word. And you needed this word not for the same reason somebody else did, but you needed this word for yourself. Now comes decision time. And you know what God is, the spirit of God is telling me right now. This is not in this matter, in this message, in this moment. It's not a matter of being saved or unsaved. Today, God is talking to some saved folks. God has sent this word to somebody who knows him. He knows you. You're in a relationship. You're in covenant with him, but you're struggling. You're struggling on what decision you make. You're struggling with what you heard him say. But you can't hide from this decision. It has been said too many times. You've heard it noise too many times. The moment that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So I want to I want to speak to somebody's heart today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through. And it doesn't matter to me, but you need to know it matters to God. And I simply want to remind you that if you deny him in the presence of man that he'll deny you in the presence of his father so you have a choice now you have a choice now wherever you are it doesn't matter where you're at and we may never physically see you but God sees you he says that his eyes are everywhere so you now have to make a choice for those who are under the sound of my voice, if you can apply this word to your life and if you feel that you hit that rock bottom or you feel like you've gotten to that place where enough is enough, but yet God is still talking to you. God is still requiring something from you. God still needs something from you. The question is, will you tell him yes? If you can apply this word to your life today, I want you to just raise your hand right where you are. No matter what you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, if you can, if you can apply this, God bless you. Wherever you are, if you can apply this word, I understand that it feels like you've, you've hit the bottom. I understand that it, it feels like you've hit that ultimate place. But God is saying there's so much more for you. There's so much more I want to do through you. And I want to encourage you today that you can turn, you can turn your situation around. And God through you can turn your situation around if you let him work through you. So all over this building, all over the airway, again, raise those hands high. That God will see you. It's me, God. It's me, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I touch once again today with every hand that is raised, with every person who has identified and said, it's me, God. And again, we say yes. Yes to your will, God, and yes to your way. That we will not continue to press towards the mark. You said that we can speak to the obstacle out of the depths of a mustard seed faith and that the obstacle will be removed. It was you, God, who uttered the words and said that you've never seen the righteous forsaken. So even now, God, operating at a place of deficiency. I've, I'm at a deficit, God. I, everything in my mind and my heart and my body says that I don't have any more to give. I don't have any more that I can do. But, but you yet are telling me there's still more that you require. And so I choose to put my trust in you. And all I can say is use me, Lord. Have your way in whatever you desire. So I pray for every 
hand that is raised, God, I pray for every mind. I pray for every heart regulated right now. I bind every emotion right now because emotion has no place in your kingdom. I bind the flesh right now that desires to raise up. And I know, Master, that you said that no flesh shall inherit the kingdom. Have your way in this place. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let all the people of God say amen. amen. Come on, give God the big hand praise all over the building. Come on. Come on, give God the big hand praise all over the building. Come on. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, come on. Stand to your feet with me. Come on, come on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord in this place. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on, his mercy. Come on, let's bless God for his mercy. Come on, he's a provider. If anybody knows he's a provider, come on, bless him in this place. He's a way maker. He's an answerer. He is the answer. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you for being with us again today. We honor all of you who are joining us over the airways. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Uh, amen. Once again, we're going to stand because we're going down from this place. Today, we want to give a shout out. We're going to make a cry, a plea for vision partners. Amen. There are those who are here locally who have been consistent. There are those who are abroad who have been consistent in joining our efforts to be able to do the master's will. So you say, what is God's will? I heard Jesus say, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you came and visited me. We simply want to follow the instructions. We want to do what God has called us to do here in the great Northwest. We're not the answer. We're not the only answer. And even when we do answer, we can't answer at all. But in order to do any of the things that we do, we need your support. First and foremost, we want to ask you to continue to pray that the Spirit of God will find favor with us and that we will daily uh, recommit ourselves to do that which God has called us to do. But there may be those out there today for the first time. You say, what is a vision partner? A vision partner is not only those who will pray for us, but those who will sow. And by faith, believe that if they sow a seed, that another will water, and that in due season, God will provide the increase. There's several ways that you can do that today. If you want to sow a seat, you can mail that, that gift to us. Our mailing address is Church of the Living God. The address is 1954 South M Street. That's Tacoma, Washington. Our zip code is 98405. Maybe you're in the surrounding area. You want to come by and you want to do a drive-by. So that will bless us because we'll get a chance to verify, see your smiling face, and that will bless us. Also, we want to be seen by you to let you know that God is still keeping us. But if by chance you come by and we're not here, don't be discouraged. We have a mail slot on the front part of our building. You can drop your seat in the mail slot and someone who's a part of our finance ministry will care for it. We also want to remind you for those of you anywhere who is comfortable giving by way of technology, who are familiar with ways of giving by way of technology, we have Cash App available. And if you want to cash app us, and maybe it's not in this moment, maybe it'll be later tonight that you'll have that final uh, amen resolve with the Spirit of God and follow his leading. And, and if you want to sow that seed at any point in time, our cash app address is dollar sign C-O-T-L-G-W-A-202. You can look on the screen and you can see it. It is dollar sign C-O-T-L-G-W-A. 202. God bless you all. God keep you. We pray that again you were blessed today, that you're being blessed through the ministry, not only on Sundays, but on Wednesday. So please allow me, if I could, again today on behalf of my wife, Lady Audrey, our family, and all of these wonderful people who are our extended family, we greet you today by saying Godspeed.